Hi, my name is Tukni. I'm an educator at the Antero Science Center, but we are currently filming from my home, so welcome to my basement. Today, we'll be doing a DNA extraction experiment. To start, we'll be talking about the what, the where, and the why of DNA with laundry. All right, let's jump in. So all living things are made up of at least one cell from plants, ducks, humans, and lots of other things. Now, imagine this room is a cell. That makes the air around me, the cytoplasm, and the other things in the room organelles. And this bag of socks is our nucleus. The nucleus is where DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, is stored. A common misconception is the nucleus is the brain of the cell. But it's more like a rare book library where books aren't allowed to leave. Inside the nucleus, there are chromosomes made of DNA, which we will represent by these socks. Chromosomes have functional segments called genes represented by our stripes. Each gene holds instructions for making a protein. Proteins determine physical traits that we have, like our hair color, how many fingers we have, and really everything about us. We call these traits phenotypes. Now if you look here, these socks hold one of the genes that controls for whether you have a widow's peak hairline or not. Each chromosome has many genes, but in your cell, they aren't color-coded like these socks are. Despite that, the cell can still recognize parts of the DNA that contain instructions to make specific proteins. Genes can also have things called alleles, which are kind of like variations of a specific gene. Humans get one allele for each gene from their biological parents. If the alleles are different, we'd call that genotype, or genetically what they have that gene, heterozygous. If the alleles are the same, like for these socks that hold the same allele for detached earlobes, we'd call the genotype homozygous. Each sock is made up of a long thread knit very, very tightly. Similarly, chromosomes are made up of a long string of DNA that is coiled very tightly. If I were to pull the thread and unravel the sock, you can imagine that thread would be really, really long. Similarly, if we take one of your cells and unravel all the DNA from the nucleus, it would measure to about 2 meters in length, which is crazy! DNA also has a really cool structure. If you were to zoom in on it and look really close, it would look similar to a twisted ladder. We call that shape a double helix. The two strands of twisted DNA are made of small molecules called nucleotides. You're likely going to read about this a bit when you research the experiment later. So going back to chromosomes, you have 23 pairs of chromosomes, or 46 in total. Humans have two sets of their chromosomes in their somatic cells. We call that being diploid. Half of each set are come from their biological parents. 22 of these pairs are homologous, meaning they have the same genes in the same order. But that doesn't necessarily mean they are identical. Our last pair here are the sex chromosomes, our X and our Y. In the human genome, females are characterized by two X chromosomes, one each from their mom and dad. And in males, they have one X and one Y, the X from their mom and the Y from their dad. So why is this important for you to know? Well, knowing about DNA helps you better understand your health and the importance of genetic diversity. Plus, the experiment we're about to focus on, DNA extraction, it's the first initial step to almost every genetics-related experiment. Using a procedure similar to one we're about to do, scientists extract DNA from cells or viruses, purify that DNA, and then sequence it. Sequencing it helps them understand things like the evolution of a species, identifying mutations, and much more. This technique is even helping us in the fight against COVID-19. On top of that, purified DNA can help us genetically modify organisms. In a procedure called transformation, scientists can take a small piece of genetically engineered DNA and insert it into a bacteria, giving that bacteria a new phenotype. This technique has been used for things like producing human insulin and using bacteria to clean up oil spills. And to think this all started with a simple DNA extraction experiment. So let's extract some DNA. For DNA extraction at home, you will need alcohol. You can use isopropyl or rubbing alcohol. If you don't have that, you can use something that has a high alcohol content. Liquid dish soap, salt, spoons, a skewer or a toothpick, something that has DNA in it. You can use a lot of things for this like frozen or fresh produce. 
Today I'll be using frozen strawberries. A clear cup, something you can see through easily and is taller than it is wide. A measuring cup, coffee filters or a kitchen strainer or cheesecloth. A plastic baggie and a funnel and lastly some water. If you're doing this experiment by yourself, make sure you have the supervision or permission from a parent or guardian, especially if you're taking their groceries for your experiment. Mom, can you use our groceries for a science experiment? Yes, it's okay, Tokyi. Okay, thank you. See, it's important. All right, let's get started. For the experiment, the first thing you're gonna want to do is to get your alcohol into the freezer so it can chill. We'll be using it later on. Next, you wanna grab your produce and you want to put that into your baggie. You wanna seal up your bag, trying to get out the air, and then you wanna mash those strawberries until they're mush. Next, what you want to do is to get your measuring cup and measure out a quarter cup of water and add one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of soap to that mixture. You can see I've already measured that. Pour that mixture into the bag. Close it up again, taking out the air. You wanna mix this together. Looks good. All right, you wanna grab your cup. You wanna put the funnel into that cup and the coffee filter into that funnel. You're gonna pour this into the coffee filter so that it can strain out the liquid. You don't need to use it all. Once it's done straining, you can take out your funnel Get your alcohol from the freezer and you want to gently pour it over the strained liquid. So you want to tilt the glass to the side and gently stream the alcohol along the side of the glass so that the alcohol forms a layer on top of the strawberry mixture. You want to give this a couple of minutes to sit and watch what happens. So the little strands that you're seeing form in the alcohol layer are DNA. After a couple of minutes, if you look at the top of the glass, you're gonna notice some strands forming. That's DNA. So if you grab your skewer, you can gently grab those strands and take them out. Congratulations! You have extracted DNA at home. It is so cool. Hey, so the experiment isn't done yet. You may have noticed there's a lot of room in the experiment to change up different things. We would like to challenge you to change a variable in the experiment with the goal of increasing your DNA yield or increasing the amount of DNA you get at the end of the extraction. We recommend doing a couple of things, doing some research about what each chemical does and taking some good notes about changes you make. And if you can, measuring out the DNA you get from the original experiment and measuring it again when you change the experiment. And it's okay if sometimes your experiment doesn't work. If you can see by the mess I've made, there's a lot of troubleshooting and a lot of failure that happens with doing experiments. And that's all right. That's a part of science. I hope you had fun and learned how to extract DNA from plants. And by the way, that's a hot tip. Some plants, they are polyploid, meaning they have more than two copies of their chromosome. So that might be a good place to start. And that's it. Do our challenge, extract DNA, have fun. Bye.